listening to a download from the outdoorstation.co.uk. Number two, eight, three. Welcome to the travel show. It's a podcast full of hints and tips for travellers of all ages travelling to all places. podcast is one in a series of four and covers a trip undertaken in 2009 around Croatia. Accompanied by my friend Alice, we set off on a three-week adventure. As we had just financed three years of university, we were keen to keep things on a budget and so chose to visit Croatia because of its cheap and easy access, as well as its beautiful landscapes and deep history. Throughout this series, we describe our surroundings on our chosen route and some of the experiences as well as adventures along the way. Where possible, we talk to local characters and fellow travellers to find out more and give listeners a true flavour of the country. We stayed in hostels and homestays throughout our trip and carried all we needed for the duration in small rucksacks. For those of you interested in a budget trip around Croatia, this is the podcast for you. Part 2 Several days into our travels, we were much more relaxed, enjoying the coastal city of Zadar and the company of our newfound Croatian friends, who took great pride in introducing us to Croatia's fantastic ice cream. A short catamaran away from Mali Lozenge was the port of Zadar. After arriving and finding a room, we left our bags to explore the cobbled streets of the old city. By this point, um, we were very mellow after enjoying a really nice day of sunshine in the city. It's day five of our travels and um, we are now in Zadar. Um, this morning was a very another early morning start um, for travel. We were up at half six with the bells. <laughs> yeah, we got the bus into Mali Lozenge and waited for the catamaran, um, which picked us up at, because uh, it's a Sunday, it was um, 9.20 and kind of left at 9.40. Easy enough crossing. To be honest, it's been a really easy day travelling by our standards. We haven't got a wrong bus. We haven't got a wrong boat. We were picked up by a really nice lady at the port, um, as promised, who offered us rooms and took us to a really nice house in the suburbs. It was about, well, she said it, it was 10 minutes walk, which is more like it was 30, wasn't it? More like 25 or 30 minutes, but it's, it's a nice walk and the, the roads seem safe and it's fine. Yeah, and um, so we got in and she'd also picked up a few other travellers who were coming, some, a Croatian couple um, who were also travelling around, which is quite interesting speaking to them. Their English is amazing. And yeah, so we, we headed off into town once we settled and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's a really nice town. Like We went to the old, the old walled part and um, so we had a look around the shops, had some food and went to the pier where there were sea organs. Yeah, I think it's um, Zadar's claim to fame, the, the sea organ. It's quite calming, actually, and it really does sound like the sea. <laughs> yeah, it's. I don't know how they do it. They must have pipes in, in the concrete or something that when the sea kind of ebbs and flows, it it makes noises which kind of pipe out from the, the concrete as well. Um, but it's really nice. It's where everyone kind of goes to sit and jumps in because there's kind of steps down to the water. So we, we literally just sat there for... A good few hours just people watching and chatting and taking in the sunshine and really getting into the vibe here in Croatia. It's just a much slower pace of life. It's lovely. Um, and the lady that we've, um, we're living with for the next few days uh, was really kind to let her use her kitchen. Um, so we made some very nice homemade pasta. And tomorrow we booked a trip to the National Park. Um, it was a boat trip. It's a full day 
Um, and we're going with the Croatian couple because, as, as always with a, a group, you get a discount. We're really looking forward to that tomorrow. Um, it's going to be a whole day from 8 till 5.30, something like that. Um, you get breakfast and uh, you're also getting a nice big lunch, salads and grilled fish and stuff like that, which will be fabby. Um, I'm looking forward to getting some fresh fish. Not so much for Alice. No, I'm hoping there will be a vegetarian option, but I think we'll have to wait and see. So, yeah, really um, kind of just chilling out at the moment. It's it's really nice to enjoy the weather and the food. And, I mean, the price as well, the accommodation was a lot cheaper. Um, it was only 100 kun, and we managed to bargain a little bit, um, which which makes a change. So, yeah, all, all is good with the world. Um, but we'll um, touch base tomorrow and see how, how the day trip works out. Second day in Zadar, we went on a boat trip to the nearby islands in one of uh, Croatia's many national parks. After a long day on the boat, we reflected on the day's events and marvelled at what a good shower can do. I would like to start this podcast um, by saying, and actually announcing really, that we are clean. We've had a whole day in the sun and the sea, and we went to a salt lake, so we're even more salty than the sea would be. And it's so nice to come and have a shower and actually feel clean and put clean clothes on. And um, paint your faces as well, it's quite nice. Yeah, put some makeup on, and um, of course the, uh, the habitual um, mosquito spray. But, you know, I, I feel quite spruced. It's very nice. But um, yeah, so today we did the boat trip as we talked about yesterday, um, and that was to the national park islands that are just off Zadar. Um, we were up early again, um, and we left by eight with the um, Croatian couple, which we mentioned before, uh, Matti and Marta, um, and had a really good day with them actually, um, just sort of chatting on the boat, getting to know each other, and um, talking about different people's way of life as um, their students. So we had a fair amount in common and just trying to sort of see the similarities and differences and just in general have a chat. So yeah, we made it to the National Park, went around the islands, um, which were really interesting geologically. Um, there was odd um, rock formations and things, um, but sadly we didn't actually we weren't able to um, jump out of the boats and sort of swim around them. The one island we did stop at um, was the one that which had the salt lake, which, although it was very salty um, and supposedly has healing powers, Alice will um, keep you informed how mozzy bites go, but it was actually quite scummy, and compared to the, the crystal clear waters of the seas that we're kind of got accustomed to already, it was actually a bit gross. So we ended up um, just swimming in the sea nearby. So I guess what's your evaluation of the, the value for money um, of the trip? Um, I have to say that I don't think this particular trip was value for money. I enjoyed the day getting to know um, Matty and Marta a bit better, but the Salt Lake was, as you said, a bit scummy and very crowded um, and the journey was was quite long and qu quite rocky so we didn't get as long on the island as perhaps we would if it was slightly nicer weather. Yeah and the food we did have like it, w it was nice and we had sort of biscuits and um, their uh, traditional drink is it Reiki or Rekia? Yeah Rekia I think. Rekia um, as a, as a breakfast aperitif um, about half past eight in the morning um, lovely as you're about to go on a rocky journey um, and sort of had like a sandwich for breakfast and some grilled fish and salad for lunch which was fine but for for 30 pounds again you kind of expect a little bit more and a bit more variety and you know ability to sort of have some food when you come back onto the boat um, on the trip home so in that sense we had a great day um, glad I went but if you come here and look at the trip, definitely shop around because we got quite a cheap deal. But again, question how much you want to see the islands because it's probably different to boat trips you've done before. So we're about to go and um, have a lovely meal with Matty and Marta who are busy cooking in the kitchen for us. It's our turn to cook for them tomorrow night. Um, but planning on some drinks and some cards and olives and just a general chilled evening. We're trying a traditional Croatian beer tonight. I think it should be good.
So the plan after our meal with Matthew and Marta was to hit Sadar for a few drinks in the local bars. However, the weather had different ideas. When it's sunny in Croatia, it is scorching. But when it rains, oh boy does it rain. Whilst it's pouring outside, I took the opportunity to talk to Matty and Marta about their own travel adventures in Croatia. So here I am with um, Matty and Marta, the couple that we met um, a few days ago. Um, and we went for a really great bike ride today together. And they've um, we're just talking about the places we've been and things. And they've actually taken quite a different route to us. So I thought it would be interesting to sort of talk to them and see what they have to say about um, Croatia as a whole, because obviously they live here all the time. Um, but if you could just um, briefly introduce yourselves and what you're doing now, um, and we'll start from there. So... Hello, I'm Matty. Um, currently I'm a student and I play the cello at the Musical Academy and the University of Zagreb. I'm Marta, I also play violin at the same university Matty said in Zagreb. And so that's it. And so where have you been so far? Because you've been traveling for is it almost a week now? Yes, it's been a week. We've been to a small island, Uni, near Tres, and then we've come to Zadar, just because we've never been here. So, And um, is Udin... I can't say the name. How do you say the name again? Unie. Unie. Um, the island Unie um, is one that we actually stopped off on before we went to Mali Lozenge. And so I looked through the guidebook and I didn't find a thing about it. I was looking um, for people that want to know. Um, I've got the 2005 third edition Croatia Rough Guide. Um, so it's obviously a bit old, um, but the, the island isn't on there. So if you could possibly say what you did on the island, how long you spent there, um, what's worth seeing. Because Matty, you said that you've been there for since you're about two, haven't you? Uh, yes, well, uh, the, the special thing about the island is that it's uh, not as big as other Croatian islands, but big considering the fact that it hasn't got any sort of uh, uh, car transport, n no ro roads whatsoever, and um, all you, you have is little tractor things and, and little motorbikes. Uh, the island's got just one settlement. It's quite small, and it's not as um, regularly shaped as the other, uh, say, Croatian sea towns. It's kind of just as it goes, just confusing and fun. Yeah. Um, well, the, the, the special thing about the island is uh, that it's got a number of really different and rather beautiful beaches. They're not the same as others, and they're not uh, the same as the other ones on the island. So, so it's a lot of different stuff to see and explore on the island. And you said that they've actually, they haven't got any public transport, um, but they do have an airport. Yeah, it's, it's just a big field that's been there for a long, long time. And uh, there's actually quite a bunch of airlines uh, going and to and from Unie. Um, and there's been a couple of, of, of fun situations where pilots didn't couldn't land on the airfield because sheep were down there. <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. So um, you went to Unie? Is that right? Yeah. right? yeah, okay. Unie. And um, then you came to Zagreb and you're here for a few days like us. And then where are you, where are you going next? We're going, we're in Zadar now, and then we're going to Zagreb. And then we're going to island, also a small island, that is connected to the land. It's called Murter. Yeah. And is there anything in particular you're sort of seeing on there? Are you just going to do a bit of beaching and just chilling out? Beaching, beaching yes. It's like a real regular vacation. So you're saying that you've been around Croatia a few times before, just like different places. What keeps coming, like you coming back to it? The beautiful sea, the beautiful beaches, the pleasant native people, <laughs> low prices, I'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding, but the sea and the nature is really pretty. And is there anything in particular that you'd, you'd recommend for people to see if, if they've got one place they can go to Croatia? Um, is there a particular place you'd say? Zadar. Zadar and Unia. <laughs> <laughs> so basically the places you've been so far. Fantastic. 
So after the rain died down, we managed to head into town, and I'm so glad we did. The city is so beautiful by night, as the walled、um, old town is full of bustling cafes which light up the cobbled streets. We also got to see the art installation called Salute to the Sun, which is along the main pier next to the sea organ. In the daytime, you can barely see it, and it just looks like several circular solar panels on the ground. Which are designed to re- resemble the solar system, but at night there is an amazing array of lights which beam out from them in each direction, and it makes it look like a seventies disco. It is really something to see when you have a starry night surrounding you, and as it was still drizzling, we managed to get it pretty much to ourselves. The next day was another great day at Inzadar, seeing a few more sights and spending more time by our beloved sea organ. So it's day seven, and we've actually been away a whole week,、um, which has been fantastic. And me and Alice actually celebrated this morning with our first proper lion, really,、um, which was till about nine o'clock. But still, it、um, was very enjoyable. And、um, by after that, it kind of just got too hot and stuffy in the room.、Um, but we spent the day. Kind of doing nothing, but it was one of those really great days that just kind of flies by, and kind of a lot of it was just chilling, sat in the sun.、Um, so this morning we went to the market, had a look at the local produce and stuff, which was fab, and then found our way to the bus station, which took a little bit longer than we expected.、Um, but we we have got a bus for tomorrow morning, bright and early, to where was it called? I have no idea. <laughs> Zip, zip it out. Shubenik, Shubenik. We're、um, we're still here with、uh, Masia Ma, so we've just eaten a fabulous meal. I say fabulous; it was just massive. <laughs>、um, but、um, so they're they're coaching us through our creation as always. So we spent the day doing sort of the few sites that we haven't seen yet. So we went to see the Five Wells Courtyard,、um, which is very picturesque, and、um, saw the it's called the Land Gate to the City, which is also very grand、um, and kind of in the place of like in the middle of the the walled city, which is also pretty large. And we walked around the walls. So we had the walls on the right and the the coast on our left. So you got a real nice feel of the、um, the marina and. The general flavour of the city,、um, and then we went to our favourite place, which is basically the Sea Organ, where、um, we actually bumped into Matty and Marsa, following us everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and they were telling us about their fantastic ice creams. What was it you had in the end?、Um, I think we had four,、uh, four scoops together, so two scoops each, and it was Paula Paula that it, actually、uh, half and half. So, yeah, so can you just explain about Polo Polo and why it's so fantastic? Well,、uh, the thing is that、uh, always when you when you get Polo Polo, that means that you'll actually get one scoop that's quite as big as two normal scoops, because whenever they get one flavor to to fill in、uh, the half, they actually get more than you would expect. So so. You kind of get yeah two for one. It's <laughs> special in Zadar. <laughs> It's absolutely yeah, fantastic. Exactly. If you ever want、um, ice cream when you're in Croatia, I recommend asking for Pola Pola because you just get more. We just chilled out by the sea organ,、um, read our books, dived in there. There's there's loads to see. Everyone kind of、um, congregates there and watches、um, watches each other diving off and sunbathing and such things. And、um, then came back and it was our turn to cook me and Alice. So we've done a, as I said, pasta meal.、Um, lots of stodge. It's great fun.、Um, and so we're just having a rest basically until we have our pudding. But tomorrow, we, yes, as I said, we're leaving bright and early、um, to travel to、um, Shubenik. Shuben, Shubenik. Yes, Shubenik. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to get Mars to say it for me. And then hopefully going on to the national park. But we'll sort of see whether we can do that tomorrow or the day after. So、uh, see how things work out from there. But、um, I think it's probably about time to go and、um, grab dessert, as we're all quite、oh, well. I don't know. I'm I'm getting a little bit peckish again, so it should be good. Anyway, so we'll let you know、um, whether we make the national park tomorrow. Actually, before we go, I think we should say goodbye to Matthew and Martha because we're leaving them tomorrow. It's quite sad, and they're back off to、um, to Zagreb. I just want to say it was lovely meeting you guys. Really enjoyed it, and thank you for helping us with the、uh, podcast. You're welcome, <laughs> and see you in England. Yes, I、yeah. hope you come to visit. That's the plan, anyway. As you can probably tell from our、um, 
podcast so far, we were really quite taken with the ice cream in uh, in Croatia, and I just wanted to clarify our last um, excited explanation of Pola Pola in the interview. In Croatia, there are so many ice cream flavors; it isn't true. And so we learned from Mati Marta that you can ask for Pola Pola, which translates as half and half. So you get to try two flavors for the price of one in in one cone. And a lot of the time you do get more than half of each flavor, so you do end up with more for your money. So you ask for Pola chocolate, Pola pistachio. It's that simple. After another great night with our newfound Croatian friends, the next morning it was time to bid farewell, and we headed on to Kirka National Park, which is near Šibenik. We really had a flying visit there, um, and the following day we moved straight on to Dubrovnik, which is where we pick up our tail. So we're on day nine now, um, and we didn't actually podcast yesterday because we had a very long, actually knackering day, um, which we'll go through in a minute. Yeah, so we're actually on day nine, and we're at Dubrovnik, which is beautiful. The um, we've got a balcony at our um, the room we're staying in, and it's looking over the bay, and the sun is setting, and it just like we're both so happy to be here, to be honest. So yeah, day eight, we basically left Mati and Marta in um, Zadar after they very kindly walked us to the bus stop at half past seven, um, and we got the bus to Shivanek, which, which was about an hour and a half. Rough, yeah, it was about an hour it and a half. It was about an hour and a half. Um, and we we realised now that you know, if there isn't people at the bus stop, the best thing to do is to go to a tourist information bureau, um, which we spotted as we came into the bus bay. Um, And yes, we went there straight away, basically, and got a room for 145 kuna a night, um, which is pretty reasonable. We've come to the kind of conclusion that anything under 150 is pretty good, really, isn't it? Yes, the best we found was um, 100 kuna per night in Zadar, and the most expensive were the first couple of nights in the Hotel Riviera in Pula, which was 150 a night. So basically, anything underneath is a bonus. Um, and yeah, as we kind of got the room sorted pretty quick, we went straight to um, the bus station and booked a bus to um, Kirka Park, which is um, the national park, um, which took about 25 minutes bus ride. And then it was um, 95 kuna um, entrance fee. That's at peak season. It's cheaper in kind of spring and winter as well. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously it was pretty touristy. There was lots of people around, um, and we got the bus to the, sort of the waterfall, the, the kind of site start, um, and walked around, um, taking in various fauna and flora. Um, and Alice was reading all the uh, different reptiles. There was basically loads of signs saying, you know, what what was in the undergrowth, but we we didn't spot anything, did we? Sadly. No, I'm quite glad we didn't spot the horn-nosed viper because that's the only poisonous uh, snake they have in the park. So we uh, we avoided that one, thank goodness. Um, and then we swam basically in the waterfall for about an hour, which was really relaxing. There's, I mean, there is a lot of people at the park. You do feel because the the walks, the um, the sidewalks above the um, the lakes and things are pretty um, narrow. You do feel like you're on um, a bit of a conveyor belt with everyone. Um, but again, it is peak season, so in in probably lesser times it will be a lot quieter um, and then we basically got the bus back at five um, which was a little delayed so we were quite glad when it turned up at half past five otherwise the last one was at eight um, which we weren't really excited about getting. I just want to add that the National Park was somewhere that I would recommend going. The landscape is really beautiful and it had a nice mix of evergreen and deciduous trees which is quite different to the landscape that is a uh, the rest of Croatia, what we've seen so far. Yeah, you made that point actually when we were on the bus today, when a, a lot of the land is pretty arid, but um, yeah, the National Park is very green and very beautiful, as Alice pointed out. Um, and then we sort of, the rest of the afternoon um, when we got back was sort of just chilling, reading books. Um, so yeah, we went to the bus station um, to book the train, um, the bus for the next day, hopefully at eight o'clock um, was what We, we intended but sadly it was already booked up so if you do want earlier buses and things it's always always good to book early and um, to make sure you've got your place um, but we actually bumped into Paul who I'm not sure if you remember from the first few podcasts we met him um, Tristy Trieste um, on the plane 
and uh, we spent a few days with him in Pula, but it was nice to catch up with him, wasn't it? Yeah, I think he's taken um, a slightly different route to us and spent a few nights um, hitchhiking and sleeping rough, but all very interesting. All in the, uh, the attempt to save some money, which he, he has done fair, fair play to him. Um, and yeah, that was basically our, our evening. We kind of had a slice of pizza and walked around the old town, which was really picturesque. Um, it would have been nice to sort of have longer to wander in the streets, but it was getting dark pretty rapidly. Um, and we did we did fit in a beer on the waterfront, otherwise it was a bit rude, really. Um, so that was pretty nice. But yeah, this morning was a bit of a later morning because we got the bus at 11. And to be honest, today we've done very little. It was... Um, we were told it was a five, no, six hour bus, and it actually turned out to be about seven and a half to eight hours. Yeah, and um, we had to change buses at Split, which was quite confusing as none of the bus drivers mentioned anything kind of to any to anyone in English or Croatian. Everyone else just seemed to know what was happening. Yeah, Alice got off the bus to go to the toilet, and I was like, okay, I'll wait here so I make sure the bus doesn't go, and then suddenly. I was the only one on the bus, so uh, we managed to work it out in the end. But yeah, just be aware of that. You might have changes on um, on the longer bus routes. Yeah, so we arrived at Dubrovnik today about um, 6.30, um, so about an hour ago, really, and um, kind of were greeted by a lot of people wandering around, um, asking um, or showing their places to stay. Um, and we found a really nice one. We're so pleased with it, um, which we managed to bargain down because we're staying for about four nights to 120 kuna each a night um, instead of um, 125 which isn't a much but over the, the next few days it's quite a saving and especially it is quite a lot under the, um, the 150 we kind of expected um, yeah and the room's got a balcony view and as I said before the sun's setting so we're both really excited about the next few days because it's, it's close to the beach it's close to the old town um, so hopefully we'll fit everything in really how are you feeling about it, Alice? I'm excited. I'm looking forward to uh, the walk around the walls and to hopefully popping into the modern art gallery. Yeah, it's really like, I'm, I'm so excited. Both of us really wanted to come to Dubrovnik, so um, we'll have to let you know how it works out. Join us in part three, where we visit the historical walled city of Dubrovnik and journey inland towards Bosnia. Seeing close up the devastation that is still present after 15 years. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To hear more from our extensive free library, please visit the website at theoutdoorstation.co.uk. You can now follow The Outdoor Station on Facebook, where we chat about each program we produce, answer questions, and discuss future productions. Why not join us there? This podcast is produced and hosted by theoutdoorstation.co.uk.